Hey guys. Oh, I'll do that. I'll do that. Head coach, sporting director, Greg. Greg Vance. Hey, Greg, thanks for your time. Are you ready? Ready. So, at the start of the season, everybody asking whatever sport, what trends do you see? What, what kind of season is this going to be? Can you see anything that, that gives you an idea of what season this will be like in, in MLS? Is there you know, a, a way teams are going to play? The, the, the League's Cup, does that change the way you approach things? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I think, you know, teams are built different ways in MLS. Some are built to take the long haul and lots of competitions and, uh, and others are built to just try to win a championship, which is, you know, for the playoffs kind of thing. And so it'll be interesting now that we have so many competitions and so many potential games in front of us, how teams will, will approach these different competitions. Uh, you know, the season itself, I think, will... Well, always has trends that you don't expect, teams that rise to the occasion, teams that uh, struggle and just don't find it for different reasons. So I, I don't know what to predict on that side of it, but it'll be interesting to see how everybody uh, determines inside their own camp how they want to manage uh, the quantity of games and the different competitions that the teams are in. You said last year that the, real, the, the season really starts in the last 10 games, and you nailed that because the last 10 games carried you to the playoffs, then you had a chance to win. Yeah. The last 10 games this year will come after League's Cup, pretty much after Open Cup. It'll be The focus will be then on the MLS schedule and getting into the playoffs, which expanded this year. Is that kind of your approach again, the last 10 games is going to determine? No, I, mean, I think, you know, the whole season matters, first off, but I think the last 10 games is a little bit, uh, a little bit gives you an idea of what the playoff trends are going to look like. Teams that are playing well tend to enter the, the playoffs in a knockout series or in, in these these types of uh, tournament competitions. The teams that tend to be playing well tend to do better in the playoffs. That's what I kind of mean about the last 10 games being important to find your rhythm, to find your confidence, to find the things that will will help carry you through that type of environment. Um, but every game matters in the season, as you see. It, it can come down, I mean, two years ago, it came down to point differential for us in terms of making the playoffs and not. And those, that one point could have been picked up anywhere along the line. And so every every game, all points matter. I think in our league, I think there's, like a lot of leagues, there's a natural progression where the first, you know, five games or so tend to be a little herky-jerky and teams are still settling in and finding their, their groove and their form and their fitness and all of those kinds of things. But uh, now this year with having a league's cup thrown in kind of in the middle of it, uh, it will, it plays an interesting dynamic where league actually shuts down for nearly a month and we play a whole nother competition. And then you have to pick up and get it going for that last stretch and get yourself ready for the playoffs and into the playoffs for some teams, for most teams. So uh, it, it'll just be interesting to see how, you know, how people play it out. But I think there will be a mindset that, for most teams that every game is going to be an important game because it, it does sometimes it does come down to the wire as to who's in and who's out you also look at uh, an, ex an expanded playoff system yeah so if you go the distance in every competition you're maybe what 55 60 yeah. games yeah i mean that's my calculation i mean if you if you do well in uh in any of the tournaments whether it's open cup or leagues cup or you go relatively deep in the playoffs you're certainly going to be 50 plus games in, in that type of scenario and that's a uh, that's significantly more than what teams i think have generally endured you see it more from teams that are in champions league and we have teams in champions league as well so uh so it, it is uh it's a heavy a heavy lift and that's why i say it'll be interesting to see how many teams what their different strategies are inside of it because some teams are built to have a, a top 14 and they play the vast majority of the minutes but that's a lot for 14 players to carry the weight on on that many games and so some teams are built with a lot more depth and they spread their money a little bit thin wider and uh you know they might be built for a longer season but maybe they lack a little bit of quality in the final stretch so it'll, it'll be interesting it, it's it's a new wrinkle inside of uh, inside of the league, and and you know ultimately at the end of the day, I think everybody will prioritize getting in the playoffs and having a chance to win the championship because that's that's the uh, that's the traditional way. As of right now, which which team are you? Uh, right now, we are focusing on league, and uh, you know as we continue to build out the roster and and move towards the different events. Uh, we will we'll play for everyone to set ourselves up to try to win a championship in each one of them, but we'll, 
we'll do so in a way to try to be intelligent about the minutes that we are exposing players to and the process that we're trying to take to get there. So, but we we want to be competitive in in uh, in all the events, and it's just going to see we'll see how healthy we are and and where we're at as we arrive into those different events. Could you tell us a little bit about what's so exciting about opening at the Rose Bowl with the, with another El Trafico? Can you convince some people who are not wanting to go in the rain to go to to go to this <laughs> game? Like what makes it special? Yeah, I mean, look for me. I'm an I'm an original Galaxy 1996er. Where and for those first six years that I was at the team, the Rose Bowl was the place, and it was, you know, it's one of the iconic venues of of soccer in our country. It's hosted a World Cup final. It's obviously it was the home of the Galaxy for many years. I think one of the top rivalries now, uh, if not the top rivalry in terms of attention in the MLS, is is this one. Um, they obviously are coming off of a highly successful season. Um, you know, we feel like we let it slip away from us at the at the very end there, uh, when we were in a in a pretty solid position. Um, and I think both teams are, we're certainly progressing and building, and uh, both teams are in a good spot. So I think you know the emotion of everything has, uh, between the two rivals, has increased in level and, and importance. And now you're going to be doing that in in the Rose Bowl, which is one of the iconic venues in front of 80,000 plus people, which should be incredibly exciting. You know, no one, I don't think there's been an MLS game that's had that many people, if assuming that we get there. So that's, you put all that emotion inside of one building and it becomes a really exciting day. That they won the double last year. What kind of pressure does that put on you? Does that put on this club? Look, at, at, at the end of the day, we have to stay focused on our process and the improvements that we're looking to make, the steps that we're trying to take to get move forward. Uh, there, to me, whether it was them next door or someone else who won the championship, it should hurt us because we want to be in the finals and we want to win championships. And so the fact that it was them, obviously that plays a factor inside of our fan base and inside of you know the local, uh, I guess, rivalry. Uh, but for us, uh, we want to be in the championship game. We want to be winning championships. So, And if we don't, it doesn't matter who wins it at the end of the season. We didn't succeed in what we were trying to accomplish when we set out for the season. So for this year, again, it doesn't, I don't know how much it changes our uh, our direction. It doesn't. It doesn't change our process and how we feel like we need to get better. It doesn't change our focus or goals on the season. It's not us against them. It's us against the other 28 teams in the league, and, and we want to be the team standing at the end of it. Do you think that there's a difference between how the team looks at it because you guys have a different mission and how the club looks at it because there's a... Uh, there's certainly a battle for fan base in this city, and, and uh, you know your marketing and all of that enters into the equation as well, which it doesn't with you guys. Do you think that's a different? Well, yes and no. I mean, again, I think the most important thing for any club to do is to focus on themselves and who they are, and be able to tell that message and make sure that its fan base understands who we are, what we represent, what we stand for, and what it is we're trying to accomplish, and that we can prove that we're taking steps towards that. That's more important than marketing against anyone or to to try to put somebody else's uh, story down. It's for us to concentrate on ourselves. You know, if before I was at the Galaxy and years ago, I felt like when they first arrived, it, there was an energy towards against that group that was new and showing up. And you can lose your way if you don't focus on yourself and what, what it is that makes you great and what it is that's going to make you great continuing to move forward and what's going to make you successful as you continue through the process. So, uh, you know, the fact that they won a championship certainly stings for, I'm sure, our fan base and, and for all of us. But the reality is, is we have to focus on the things that we need to do to keep improving to make sure that we're the one that's, that's in that position uh, as we move forward. And so... Uh, for me, that's the focus. Everything else is a distraction, and, and um, we stay we stay on on ourselves, improving ourselves. How did, uh, when did Tyler get on your radar to bring him in? Yeah, you know, I've known, we've known Tyler obviously for a while through the U.S. team and through uh, mainly probably his introduction into the U.S. team is when I started to understand knew who he, know who he was, and uh, so then we started to get a better understanding of his situation within his club and. Uh, and his qualities as a player, which we kind of knew. And then when, when some of these things you start to realize players are going to be available through one, one mechanism or another, then 
it starts to pique your interest. So over the, probably the last four plus months, four or five months maybe, we started to understand that he might become available and uh, and might be an option for us. Um, some things had to play out, of course, and as they do in most of these, but it was it's probably been a few months at least, probably four since we we found out that he might be available and a few since things started to become a little bit clearer in the process. How much easier is it for him to acclimate given that he is American, that he's been here before? Yeah, I, a foreign player. yeah. I mean, I think in terms of acclimating in the locker room and making connections in the group, there's some guys he already knew. Uh, they're obviously language, different things like that are, are a lot easier. Settling in because he has family in Southern California, as as I'm sure will be a bit easier for him and and his wife. And uh, so those things easier. I still think it's a new league, and it's still gonna gonna take him a little bit just to. Uh, acclimate inside of the MLS and understate the different challenges that exist because if you haven't been in the league you, it's always a little bit of a, an eye opener when you get the first uh, first go around so uh, those are things that I think he'll still need a little bit of time he obviously entered into preseason a little bit late so still getting you know to fitness and getting connected to the group and and all that relationships on the field and nuances things like that he'll still he'll still need a little bit of time but it, but in the end I think it will be easier for him to acclimate for, for the things I mentioned at the beginning. Yeah. Anything else? we got Tyler right here so we can start with him. Ready? Thanks, Greg. All right. Thank you. Can I grab you for a minute? Yeah.